Well, folks, I officially invested in this series now. See this little stick? That's not a USB stick. That is an external hard drive, a small SSD. So I can work a bit easier because this laptop has quite a limited amount of storage. Uh, this is video I shot in 2022. Enjoy. I'm back with tea, which actually I should take out now. I'm teabagging you all collectively here. It's an Inkel MX1100 mixer. And actually, that's a pretty serious one. Uh, it has balanced outputs, it has proper inputs, it's, uh, it's got some uh, separate views for the monitor and the main mix and left and right and yada yada. Okay, that could have ended badly. We've got these shitty things, never buy these cheap in plastic, and they were already falling apart, so that could have ended worse. Uh, I will actually need one or two of those. Uh, let me grab some. Should still have a few. There's one, the metal ones. And there's two, okay. We only need two to check all of the inputs. So uh, we're gonna have to do them one by one, right, left, pen left, pen right. And we have, we have a monitor out, we have main out, and we have left and right out. This is looking good, but I'm not hearing anything yet. Uh, why is that? Because I need to... Sounds healthy. Equalizer works, that works. Monitor out, we need to test later, but yeah, that works fine. And we can pan it left and right, it's the wrong way around, but that's fine. We got echo. That's horrible. I had to turn that echo off for all the channels because that is just painful. No peak LEDs here. So, not sure what that's about. Maybe it's just for the microphone input. I don't know. Let's go to the next two inputs here. Definitely got all, the, all of the volume here. Let's uh, make sure we get all the lights dancing. There we are. All of the lights going crazy. Can you see? There we are. So all we need to test now is the phono, but I'm gonna turn the volume all the way down for that. Uh, phono. There we are. Okay, so that works. And the other phono input, I assume they are separate phono preamplifiers. Perfect. Literally nothing wrong with this thing. I actually sort of want to keep it because it's cute as hell, but I really don't need it. But here's your Inkel MX1100, which is a very nice little mixing console. If you need something with eight mono inputs, sorry, six mono inputs and two stereo, Pretty good. You can hook up 10, uh, no, one, two, three, five stereo devices to it and go ham. Not too shabby. So this is a bit of a problem. These are, why are they not moving? Oh, okay. These are apparently very hard to move. Oh, these are very heavy, heavy, heavy speakers. There's no way of seeing what's in them. I don't even know how to open them. Um, I know they have two massive 12 inch, maybe even bigger, no 12 inch, 12 inch full range units. Well, I don't know which brand they are. They could be incredibly valuable, they could have no value at all. Um, let's plug them in and see what we get, but you can see the full range unit here, and that's literally all you can see. Weirdly, these are connected with a 5 pole wind plug. Which is not really what you expect for speakers, but it should work. These could sound beyond beautiful. These could sound incredible. Um, the lady was adamant that they were very expensive speakers, but I'm not sure how much she knows about it. I think she mostly knew the price. And they may have been expensive, but maybe she uh, overpaid. Who knows? So I'm going to uh, yeah, give them a listen. I have no idea what to expect right now. That's very underwhelming. Some. They sound like two big full range speakers. There may be massive low end somewhere, but not here. This sure as hell isn't going to be easy. This lamp is really not cooperating. There we are. Oh, come on. This is not a very high quality corner, so it's very easy to bend out a bit. And then we can just remove the cover. And there we are. Two huge full 
wrench drivers. This is not actually that big of a deal. Uh, it's a pity that it's a bit dented, but it's not a big deal. The question is, are these cheap pieces of junk, or are these actually in any way valuable? There's no highs at all, by the way. Another challenge. Oh, not too bad. It dried out a bit. It's going to come out. Made in Belgium. They're Philips. They're the AT12202. Let me Google those, actually. It's a, a full range Philips speaker. Uh, what do they fetch these days? Apparently a pair of these fetches about 200 bucks, a pair, and I have four. Yeah, they're used in open baffles and everything. Really? One, is this the M8? Yep, easily 200 for a pair, so that's 400 euros in speakers. I hope they all work, these two work. So I almost uh, took the speakers out and then I realized, wait, I need to make a video of these because people really like these Philips speakers for reasons I don't really know and I just want to make a, a video showing how they sound it's not the ideal cabinet for this I do know that but at least you can hear how the highs are or lack thereof um, so yeah there will be a video of these and my speakers speaking for themselves series but it's good to know that uh, they actually have some really nice um, or at least really valuable uh, full range units in them by Philips yep just fine this one seems to sound a bit nicer than the other, but that's probably because it's now right side up. This is the Philips N6302, aka the Coco Phone. Coconut Phone. Uh, I don't know if these even sound good, but I'm about to find out. Uh, they've been creative again with RCA, sorry, what am I saying? With DIN, which is original, so that's kind of nice, to us, to, uh, to Jack. Uh, yeah, it looks like it should work to be honest. Oh! I don't know bad. They're very old fashioned, so you don't have a lot of highs and lows, but what is there is actually really pleasant. The highs are pretty good for old headphones, because these are... 68, yeah. Headphones weren't great back then. Honestly, for 60s headphones, these are remarkably good. They're really not bad. Uh, it's a bit hollow. Oh, there's a switch on the side. I forgot about that. What does that do? Is that mono and stereo or volume? Or... Let me see, actually. Maybe they can get even, get even better. They definitely got a bit better, but this goes from mono to stereo. I don't even know how. It says made in Austria, so they may actually be uh, AKGs on the inside, but these are not bad headphones and they're actually in pretty good shape. Very complete. There's no more foam here, but that's really not a biggie. Um, let me take that out, actually, so I can clean them a little. But uh, yeah, they're fully functional and uh, sound remarkably okay. Uh, I can't really show you, I, can, I mean, I can try. Where's the microphone? I think here. So yeah, the N6302 is not too shabby. I'm gonna clean it a bit. I got this whole package of a Saba portable video recorder, the camera that goes with it, extra batteries, the power supply, but there's no way of hooking the power supply up to the camera. So I feel like there has to be either an extra power supply or the thing just only runs off battery batteries, which are, of course, being from 1983, completely dead. This one's even leaky. It's kind of a cute pouch though. They really tried to make something cool out of it, but yeah, these are uh, not gonna work anymore. I don't even have to try. So I can't demonstrate this to you, but look how cool it looks. A little camera, came with a lamp, came with a, uh, the bag that goes with it. And I, as you can see, I put up a TV already because I was like, well, this is going to work probably at least a bit. But no, we can't test it. So that's sad, but oh well, that's how it goes. I'm just going to put it back in its boxes and uh, try and sell it as untested, which it really is, of course. Um, I wouldn't even be surprised. It's a VHS-C camera, which is quite rare. Usually these were full-size VHS or Betamax. This is from the year of the Betamax Beta Movie BMC 100. Um, so this must not have sold very well because the BMC 100 is a camcorder. It has the recorder built into the camera. 
uh, this still has the separate recorder which does make the camera a lot lighter to be honest and VHS-C is a great system because you can adapt the tapes to uh, to a normal VHS recorder with a little adapter it's the same kind of tape but uh, yeah it's not really usable this way so I'm going to uh, get rid of this again that's a pity then there is this yeah security cameras and it came with a little TV with C1 and C2 so I guess that goes with these cameras it's almost double-sided tape to something it seems this kind of simple stuff usually works which is fun but the screens are often dead I mean this is a very old or orchid uh, CRT black and white screen see if we can see oh yes there you go I told you it would work okay here we go it's a bit uh, bit scratchy a bit more scratchy than it should be um. oh my god it has a microphone it has a microphone I do I do really like that it has a little microphone I uh, I did not expect that um, actually pretty good Plug this into the video out that it has for reasons unknown. Plug it into this TV's video in, and there we are. No flickery. So the flickering, the flickering is really just the little TV because the image is looking great. So how do these controls? Okay, yeah, they don't. There's a little bit of flickering, but not nearly as bad. Uh, this is something. <laughs> Actually, really like this thing. Look at how, how close up it can focus. Look at me. Look at you. Look look at you. You can't see now, can you? Because there's a camera in front of it. How are we gonna do this? Look at you. It's you. Yeah, I don't know what to do with this, but I, I like it. Uh, just gonna, yeah. Usually, when I record an audio testing video, which is by the way the easiest video for me to make, so I'm happy you guys like it so much. I know what I'm getting. In this case though, half of what I'm getting is in boxes. So this is going to be slightly exciting. Uh, it's stuff that was brought into my record store. I don't even think they paid for most of it. I'm not sure. Uh, but they want me to test it and see what is necessary to get it going. And yeah, I'm really curious what's going to be in this, uh, in this pile. Because I see a lot of boxes and I see a pile of audio. I'm going to start with a box. I'm just going to change between boxes and audio. So we all won't know what's coming. It's a video recorder box for the Sony SLV E810 and it says record player on it in Dutch. Uh, what record? Well, that's already a surprise. There's two record players. Let's get the top one. You know, this kind of stuff makes people pretty happy often because it's cheap, it's cheerful, and it comes without a power supply. So that's a great start. Let's see if there's anything else that makes us think that maybe something's wrong. The mat's upside down. Okay, we have. A functional lift, yes. Do we have a functional auto return as well? No worries, there's a cover on the stylus. Yes, we do. Uh, the platter doesn't spin indefinitely, so there is a belt, I would say. There are chances to, uh, th th there are reasons to believe that this one will work just fine. So I'm going to get myself a 12 volt power supply, hook it up to this, and see what happens. We have two channels. Not much wrong here. Yep, that works absolutely flawlessly. Uh, it sounds a bit plasticky because it is. But then these are, you know, if you want something really cheap, you can buy these at, at, at thrift shops for like 20, 25 euros, which is pretty much the same in dollars these days. They're perfectly serviceable. They usually work and they don't ruin your records. Uh, the only reason people never buy them is because of this, but thrift shops always have 12 volt power supplies laying around. So you just get yourself a power supply, you splice the wires. I'm actually going to do it neatly, so I'm going to make it nice and proper length and I'm going to solder them and put some uh, shrink uh, tube around it. But you can just do this and get uh, anything that keeps them together really, as long as the wires don't touch. You can just use tape if you want to. Um, and it just works, so that's one way to get a cheap and cheerful record player. So I'm just going to rock the arm, it already is, and keep this together because obviously this is a functional combination. And uh, we're gonna move to the next one, I hope there's not too many of these. Sorry, I'm eating a rubber band, never mind me. I hope there's not too many of these because uh, I don't have that many power supplies left. I think I still have three. 
Next out of the box, I haven't actually seen it myself yet. It's a bit bigger. It's a Sony and it's a pretty nice Sony. And if I'm not mistaken, these also came with built-in pre-amplifiers. Now, I don't know if that's this one. Probably not. This definitely isn't working anymore, which is a bit sad because it's not very old. It's a pretty heavy cover in really good shape, actually. So I'm sorry that it's deadish. So if it has a built-in preamp, it's going to go thunk when you turn it on. It's not doing anything when I turn it on. Okay. Nothing appears to be happening. I did plug it in. Oh, there we go. Now it's running. Okay. So probably no preamp then. You appear confused. It is trying, I think. Or isn't it? You see that? Something is very wrong here. Okay, do we have, uh, again, matte upside down? How is it trying when there's no belt. The belt is right here. I'm very sorry for forcing the arm that far. That was not a very smart move on my half. Should have checked the belt. Okay. Now it's going to auto return. That's okay. You auto return. Yeah, that works fine. It's a very weird record player because these are actually not mechanical switches it seems. Listen, when it's done. They're not changing anything mechanical, they are changing electronics, but they feel that you push them in quite far. I hate admitting this, but it sounds a lot better than the Akai, even though it has a way worse cartridge. So this Sony 2 is perfectly functional now that it's woken up and its belt is not around the platter anymore. It's a good thing that they did that though, because these belts, um, if you keep them around the motor pulley, they will get a dent eventually. Here's the reason these are not working anymore, they fell apart, so we have no hinges. We do have, have a very nice looking dust cover, so you can at least use it like that. It's like new, but with broken hinges. Um, yeah, A-OK -okay as far as I can tell. PM7003 amplifier. I generally do not like the sound of these. Still, I don't think I actually heard this one. Or maybe I have, but I forgot. So I'm going to hook it up to my uh, little setup here and, uh, and see what I think of it, because even though I'm listening through simple Sanzui uh, rack system speakers, these, they actually do sound pretty good, to be honest. It does have a photo input, which is kind of nice on a relatively modern amplifier. Is there a year somewhere? No, probably early 2000s. It feels very heavy, but it only uses, uses um, 200 watts, so it can never really deliver more than two times 40, which is plenty. But yeah, it's not, uh, it doesn't have the, the little door. It's not that special of an amplifier. Hey, there we are. Bass is all the way up. Source direct. That's not a lot of volume. It's really not good. It's like really not good. Well, let me test the remote. It can barely power those speakers. And it's little, little tiny speakers. This is no control whatsoever. I expected it to be not great, but it's actually bad. Yep, yeah, works. Completely giving up. Oh my goodness, what the hell? Well, let's see if the phono has phono noise. It does, so that appears to be working. Yeah, no. It just... Um, it can't handle the speakers, which is surprising, because they are extremely easy to drive. But it just can't keep the low end on the control, it just completely fades into a mushy mess as soon as you ask just a little bit of power from it. I am actually curious what's in this thing, it is most definitely a form of a function. Um, but I'm kind of curious what to find, because surprisingly, as I said, it is a very heavy amplifier. I don't know how heavy, but like more than 10 kilos. Um, and it performs like a super light, low budget amplifier does. I've heard uh, simplest Technics and JVC receivers outperform this thing with ease. So it is discreet, 
and it actually has pretty sizable uh, capacitors. There's actually nothing that makes me think that this should be a piece of junk, but then it is. So I don't know why this is so bad, and if it wasn't for the review saying exactly what I just uh, discovered, that there's absolutely no power and that it just doesn't control your speakers, um, I would think this thing is broken, but this is exactly as people have discovered these things to perform. Um, and it's, it's, shock it's actually shockingly bad. Like it sounds like a 99, like a few videos ago, I think it was the one where I was testing audio with Alexander. We had this simple uh, professional audio amplifier, like a PA amplifier. And uh, it was a 75 euro power amplifier. So of course not integrated, so there's a lot less in it. But that thing sounded a lot better than this pretty uh, expensive comp in comparison to Marantz. Um, I don't know how they can actually seriously put their name on this. Yeah, it has proven what I have been telling people for a very long time. Most Marantz should be avoided. That said, I had a PM40 SE in that same video I was just talking about. Which actually was a really nice sounding amplifier. So, you know, your mileage may vary, but don't count on the brand being good because it is this brand. There's brands that do that, like Yamaha, it's never really shit. This can be very shit, and this is very shit. I completely forgot about that amp. <laughs> it was so bad. It was actually funny. And like I said, if it wasn't for the reviews, I would have thought it was broken. I would have tested it more, but it was exactly as described in the reviews. Shockingly bad amplifier. Um, this video is going to get a pretty bad like-dislike ratio because of all the Moran's fans. You know, maybe reconsider, maybe compare. Uh, there's better stuff out there. And that ends this video. And it's, I went through footage earlier today. Well, not through the footage. I went through folders earlier today. And I have so much still coming. I don't even know how far back we're going. But this series of videos, we're going to have a lot of Audio Test Fridays coming up. I'm sure you don't mind. See you next week. Hello there people, this is the end of the video. You're looking at me through a super cheap security camera with a flickering screen next to me, but it's fun. I hope you had a good time. Have a great night. Bye-bye.